I want to film a quick follow-up review video on this Tandy Stitch Master machine. It was about one year ago when I filmed the first video review of this thing and there were a lot of kind words about it. A lot of people were glad they got this thing, but there was a lot of highly critical comments on this thing. And I don't really feel like I owe anyone uh, a response to any of that, but I would love to uh, film this so that we can clear up a lot of the confusion that's out there. And in case anyone's out there just genuinely curious about this machine, trying to make some purchase decisions, I want to clear up some of the confusion and just lay it all out there. And I actually want to let you know that I'm not being paid for this at all. This is not a sponsored video, um, nor do I have any affiliate link or commissions with Tandy in any way. The original partnership with them was for the span of six months. After that, we went our separate ways, and uh, I'm still on great terms with Tandy. I love to recommend them to people who are just getting started for certain things. So again, I have no financial affiliation with Tandy in any way at the time of filming this video. And honestly, I hate talking about that stuff, but it was the source for a lot of the criticism that I got in that last video. So I just want to clear it all up, and I'll talk about it a little bit later on. So first of all, I think that my general enthusiasm and excitement for trying out new cool things was sort of mistaken for me saying uh, that this is the perfect do-it-all, you know, uh, end-all be-all machine for every leather worker. Uh, that really wasn't my message. I probably said some things in that video that were a little tongue-in-cheek, a little bit, you know, just flippant and um, I guess that's what you have to watch out for on social media because people will take, you know, every little thing you say and then just rip it to shreds. So. Um, I want to be a little bit more careful with my words in this video and uh, be very clear about my feelings on this machine and just try and give it a really honest, clear review. It's no secret, this is a Sailrite machine. Uh, Sailrite and Tandy came together to, uh, you know, kind of put up this package. It's based off the Ultrafeed LS1, their straight stitch uh, portable heavy duty machine. And there's actually a really cool write up on Sailrite's website about the history of the Ultrafeed. It's basically the story of the founders of Sailrite coming together with a company called Thompson that was in Texas who had a really popular machine back then called the Mini Walker and uh, it was you know big in the marine world for canvas and sailmakers and uh, Sailrite wanted to make a machine that was basically that with you know some added features, uh, the bigger wheel uh, zigzag capabilities, things like that. So they came together on this machine called the Ultrafeed LSZ1 or the LS1, which is the straight stitch version. Uh, anyway, I don't want to bore you to death, but uh, there's a really cool backstory on it. This has been a popular machine for years and years and years. And I'm guessing that's why Tandy and Sailrite wanted to use the Ultrafeed as the base for this machine to offer to the leather world. All right, I think a good way to handle this video is probably just to break down a lot of the main criticisms that I saw in the comments and also the emails I was getting and uh, address each one of those. And then I'll talk about my actual experience of using the machine after a year or so of owning it. One of the overarching themes that I saw in a lot of the comments was, um, hey, that's just a sale right copy for twice the price. What a scam. <laughs> so to address that, it's not a sale right copy. This is a sale right machine. Tandy partnered with Sailrite, like I mentioned before, so this isn't some scam that Tandy's pulling that they, you know, copied Sailrite and, and are trying to just mark it up. This is, this is a genuine collaboration between Sailrite and Tandy. It even says Sailrite right here on the badge. And the argument that it's being sold for twice the price is actually inaccurate as well because you can go buy the Ultrafeed LS1 on Sailrite's website for like $7.95. So yes, that's a little more than half the price of what you'd buy the Stitch Master for. But the Ultrafeed LS1 is actually a true portable machine that comes, um, I don't even know if it comes with a base or with a case, but it's, it's a portable machine. It doesn't have a lot of the features that the Stitch Master comes with. And once you start adding in all the additional features that make this the good leather machine that it is, it actually adds up to be about the same thing. So my feelings are that it's, a, it's actually a pretty fair price 
um, once you start adding up all the different accessories and, and modifications that the Stitchmaster has versus the Ultrafeed LS1, it's actually a pretty fair price. And again, this is not me rising to the defense of Tandy. <laughs> this is me just trying to give some good honest feedback. Uh, go do the math. If you add up the table that this comes with, um, with the stand and the, the pedal, the linkage, the um, workhorse servo motor, the smooth uh, presser foot, the thread stand, the magnetic light, just everything that comes with the whole thing all together and it actually adds up to be about the same. So go do the math on your own and you know and see for yourself. But I definitely think that needs to be addressed. One of my favorite criticisms was uh, you know that machine's way too expensive. You can go buy you know old used machines for you know four or five hundred dollars. That logic just makes no sense to me at all. <laughs> of course you can do that. That option always exists. When you're looking at it, when you're reviewing a new product, of course the option always exists of going to buy an old ratty one. But I, I guess to answer that, the reason you wouldn't is because buying an old used one is going to require a lot of work to get it set up uh, in a way that makes it comfortable and usable for leather craft, especially if you're learning how to use a sewing machine. If you were to go find like a used Conso 206, uh, first of all, it might be hard to find one. You're probably gonna have to be browsing the classifieds for months, who knows how long before you find the right machine that's used, but um, once you find it, it's probably gonna have a clutch motor, which is gonna be way too fast and difficult to use. You're probably gonna have to put some work into it. You're gonna have to you know, find a smooth presser foot for it or modify the one that it has by grinding it down or something. Um, you're gonna have to find a speed reducer for it and install it and line up the belt, which I can vouch is actually kind of a pain. I had to do it on my Juki 1508 and because of the oil pan underneath, it wasn't fitting very well in a way that made it line up with the, with, with the motor. You know, with an old machine, you're not gonna have any kind of warranty or anything like that. So, so please don't get me wrong. I'm all about buying used machines. I, I've done it, Many times, uh, that's how I buy my cars and just about anything else in life. Um, you know, if you, if you just flat out can't afford to go buy the new one, then of course go find a used machine. Uh, that's just, uh, I thought that that was just an obvious thing, but I was reviewing this new machine. There might be a pretty large group of leather workers that just want to buy one that's ready to go right off the floor so they can assemble it. It has all of the instructional, you know, literature. Um, tons of videos, uh, sale rights, customer service, all of that that's just jam-packed into one to make it really easy to get into it. So that was always my argument from the beginning was this is a good machine for people who are trying to learn how to sew and uh, don't want a massive headache. I, I, and I still stand by that. I think that it's a great machine for that. But yeah, obviously, if you can't afford $1,300, $1,400, then uh, go find a used one and put the work into it. I think that's an awesome option. Okay, moving on to the next one. Oh yeah, there were a lot of comments about the fact that this only sews up to 10 ounces of leather. And I think the website now says it sews up to 16 ounces, which is like a quarter inch of leather. But um, I've never done more than 10 ounces in this. I've never attempted it, so I I've always just uh, sewn wallets on this thing, but I don't see that as a real valid complaint because this machine is designed for a very specific style of leather work. And if what you need is something outside of that, then you just need a different machine, you know, plain and simple. That's like, you know, buying a Volkswagen Jetta and then complaining that it doesn't have a truck bed in it to haul your motorcycle in. <laughs> Before you even think about buying a sewing machine, you need to decide what the majority of your work is going to be. If you're focusing mostly on heavy duty, like holsters and sheets and gun belts, um, saddle retack, then you wanna be looking at harness stitchers, like, like I've mentioned before, the CB4500, the CB3200, that's Cowboys line, um, Cobra's class three, class four, uh, and there's a few other in the mix in there as well. If all you really plan on doing is sewing like, you know, small leather goods, like, you know, keychains, wallets, things like that, then that's where this one comes into play. This is a good option for that. So I don't think that it's fair to say it's a crappy machine just because it doesn't sew heavy duty leather. It's just not what it was designed for. So uh, yeah, keep that in mind. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> this one surprised me so much. There were so many comments about the fact that it, this machine is too noisy. And um, I mean, I guess. <laughs> Let's see, is it on? 
I mean, okay. It's an industrial sewing machine though, you know? I don't know, are you trying to sew in a library? I just can't think of a scenario where that would actually be an issue. I mean, if your hearing is that sensitive to where it's like an actual problem, then, then I'll give you that. You know, I've used this machine so much now and I've never once thought about how loud it was. It's never bothered me. This is a workshop with industrial equipment. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just, you buy this machine and set it up and you, oh! I'm not trying to be a jerk, that one just really surprised me. Caught me off guard. Um, yeah, it's a little loud, so if that bothers you, don't buy it. You're just a salesman trying to make money. You're getting paid to say all this stuff. There were a lot of things like in that genre, so uh, just to cover that, I, honestly, I covered it in the first video, so I don't even feel like I need to do it again, but um, you know, when, when we originally went into that partnership with Tandy, I, I was very clear about the fact that I was only going to be honest in my videos. Um, I was not going to promote something that I didn't personally, you know, think was a good product. And so there were a lot of things that I don't. You know, the fact that the majority of my audience is people who are just starting out and just learning, I think that that would be the thing to suggest. Is like, yeah, buy the cheaper stuff first. Make sure you like this hobby and that you're really into it. And then if you are, you can invest in better stuff down the road. But, um, you know, that's not always Tandy's you know, MO, they've got a lot of quality stuff as well. But that's kind of all beside the point. The whole thing is this dynamic of like, you know, am I only saying it because I'm getting paid? And uh, I, I, again, I thought I cleared it up. I understand how it goes. I think that um, no matter what you do, if there's any kind of tied partnership, you're gonna assume there's an agenda behind everything you're doing. And I'm doing this follow-up video because I'm hoping that it could be useful to somebody who's really trying to make a, you know, decide if they wanna buy it or not. So. You know, the whole reason I started the YouTube channel is I just wanted to make cool stuff and interact with the Leathercraft community and uh, help out if I can. I don't claim to be an expert. I, I'm certainly not a, a sewing machine expert, but we've gotten so many emails and questions. If I have personal experience with it, then I'm happy to share it, but I certainly don't claim to be an expert. Okay, so now that I've gone through a lot of the main criticisms that I saw on this machine, I just want to break down the things that I I uh, don't really love about this machine and the things that I do just so that you can make a more informed purchasing decision. So the things I don't like, uh, there's the real obvious ones which first of all the fact that it's so small. This is based off the portable mini walking foot machine. And I said this in my first video, it's like this could be a pro, it's mostly a con for me. It's a pro in the sense that um, we've done a few like demonstrations where we took a sewing machine down to like Sundance Resort, for example, and I was sewing wallets while people were walking through and like looking at our work. And that, the Juki was such a massive pain to, to carry in and out. I swear it weighs three times as much as this thing. Um, and I had to take a trailer down just for that, where this would literally fit in the back of our car. It's really light, I think it weighs like 75 pounds. So that is a, a pro, but overall it's too small to be really comfortable to work with in a production setting. So if, like if you're going to be sitting at it for like, you know, four or five, six hours a day sewing work, um, you're probably not gonna be super comfortable. The other one, which is actually probably more important than the size one, is the presser foot lift. This is another one I mentioned in the first video, but you know, now that I've used it a lot, I. Uh, I think in my first video I mentioned that it's not a big problem, I'll probably just get used to it. Uh, it'll just take time to get used to, whatever. And, you know, normally I would agree with that, but, you know, as much as I've used this thing, I just usually can't wait to get back to that knee lift. I, I love being able to just use my leg to work the presser foot. When you're going around corners and you lift it a lot, and, uh, you know, you're pulling stuff in and out, I like to use both my hands and be completely free um, hands free on the presser foot. So that actually was a bigger deal than I thought in the beginning. Um, we're st still gonna hold on to this machine. Like I said, if we do demos or anything, it's one of those things like I can work past that in a demo. I can, you know, that's not a huge deal. It becomes a big deal when you're in production mode and you're trying to knock out like, you know, 100 wallets or 50 wallets or even 10. You know, this is a hobby level machine. It's, it's the kind of thing where, you, you know, you can sit down and sew one wallet and be really happy with it. As soon as you start getting into real repetition, uh, you're gonna want something that's a little bit more comfortable for production. Yeah, so the presser foot lift, that's a big one. 
Uh, here's another thing, the Feed Dog. So it has a smooth presser foot, which is really nice, but the Feed Dog has some little cross, kind of crosshair uh, ridges in it to give it traction as it's pulling the leather through. With the waltz that I've made on this, there's always a little bit of evidence of that, um, of that little neural grip pattern right there on the bottom, on the back side of the leather. So it hasn't been like a serious issue. I mean, I would still sell one of our wallets with, with that marking on it because it's not like an ugly marking. It's just kind of a, you know, little crisscross pattern that follows the stitch. And, and when I first got this, Cellrite did not make a smooth feed dog for it, but I just checked the website and they have one now. So I ordered a smooth feed dog for it. It came to like 46 bucks after shipping. But, um, you know, that takes, that takes this thing right back into the realm of like, oh, I could make production quality wallets with this and, and it would look the same as it does on my Juki 1508. Again, you're not gonna be as comfortable with this stuff, but as far as like the looks go, um, it's there. I'm gonna campaign for this, but I wish Sailrite would just sell the Stitchmaster with that smooth feed dog. I don't think it needs that traction. Oh, I wish it had a drawer on the table. All my other machines have a drawer where you can keep like the weird parts and you know, different presser feet and your thread and bobbins and everything in there. And this doesn't have it and that kind of bums me out. Okay, so the good stuff. Like I mentioned before, the customer support is phenomenal. Every time I've reached out to them, I get immediate answers back, tons of help. I love that about them. And then they, they also include like tons of uh, instructional stuff in, in with the machine uh, for like troubleshooting and diagnosing problems and jams and like anytime something happens, uh, it's easy to figure out how to fix it. And uh, that's what you don't get, unfortunately, when you buy a used machine. You know, you don't have a warranty, you don't have customer support, you're usually just kind of diving in and, and trying to figure it out. So that's one of the reasons I suggest this for people who are just getting started and just trying to learn the sewing world, you know? And then one of my favorite things about this machine, like I mentioned, is that brushless workhorse servo motor. It's so smooth and so pleasant to use. Oh, and I love this posi pin clutching system. Uh, you can store it on the outside like that in that nut and it'll free it up so it's not moving this, but you can wind a bobbin. Or, you know, you pop it in the hole and now it's engaged. Yes, work it in there a little, there we go. And now that it's in, it'll actually move the needle up and down. So the reason that's nice is because then you don't have to take the thread out of your needle when you're winding a bobbin. There's so many considerations to take in when it comes to sewing machines. That's why I really hate the question, what's the one machine that'll do it all? Because I'm just not sure that exists. I think in a perfect world, you have three machines. You have something that does really lightweight, small leather good stuff with a flatbed. And then you have like a more medium weight machine like my Texo 2750 that does like bags really well. You can sew gussets. I mean, that machine's awesome for bags, but it's not heavyweight enough for like, you know, heavy duty holsters and gun rigs. So, so that's why I invested in a Cobra class three because um, I'm gonna be doing a lot more holsters and gun rigs, gun belts, things like that, um, knife sheets. All right, so let's wrap this up. I think this machine is great for anybody who's at a hobby level and is making one or two things at a time and is just getting into the sewing world, uh, doesn't know much about machines, uh, doesn't really want to tinker a lot and, and research a lot and just wants to get into a machine right out of the gate with great customer support and a lot of good help and instruction to back it. If you're just looking for kind of a easy, uh, no fuss, you know, solution for learning how to sew, I think this is the machine for you. If you're somebody that is pretty handy and mechanical and you know how to work on machines, you know what you're looking for, uh, maybe you have experience with sewing, this is not the machine for you. Especially if you're in production, if you're trying to make more than one or two things a day. I think you'd be much better off with an industrial machine that's more in the class of the Juki 1508. If I were going to recommend a machine like that though, it would probably be the Cobra Class 20. Because if you find a Juki 1508 like mine, it probably won't have um, a speed reducer installed on it already and you'd have to go through that work. And by the way, the 1508 does not like speed reducers much because of that stupid oil pan that's under there. Um, you have to you know, heavily modify it to get it to work. So my recommendation is go pick up a Cobra Class 20 
it's gonna be ready to go right out of the gate. I think it's like a little over $2,000 retail, so it is more than this thing. But again, that's something that you could buy, um, assemble it, and it's ready to go, and it would actually be a really good production machine for you. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Now, darling, I am not afraid to, not afraid to love you. I am not a